there, it's Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and in today's Facebook Live, we are going to make this super cool hexagon dome box. I just love this paper. This is the Year of Cheer specialty paper and it's just this beautiful copper and silver, just like gorgeous. This is a great gift box for the holidays. So certainly fill it with lots of candy and maybe a really nice candle or something nice like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and then we're gonna get started. This is the box. We are gonna use this beautiful Year of Cheer designer series paper. Let me just flip through it. It's four different patterns. You get three patterns of each. Look how pretty that is. We've got gold, silver, copper, and champagne with a whisper white background, just beautiful. And it's a little bit heavier of paper, so it's great for a box like this. All right, so this piece of specialty designer series paper measures five and three quarters by 11 inches. So you can get two of these out of a 12 by 12, or you can get one out of eight and a half by 11. All right, so what we're gonna do is along the five and three quarter inch side. We're gonna go ahead and score it at two inches and four inches. And I'm gonna rotate it so that that two inch strip is along the bottom. So what I did was two inches, four inches, and I guess I rotated it counterclockwise because this top section is uh, one and three quarters inch, and that's gonna be our top of the box, okay? So we'll have two inches on the bottom, one and three quarter inches on the top. Then we're gonna go ahead and score six times, starting at one and three quarters, three and a half, five and a quarter, seven, eight and three quarters, and ten and a half. All right, now you're not gonna be able to see any of those score lines on this beautiful paper, maybe a little bit if I turn it over. So let me bring in, now we have not done these score lines yet, okay? What we've done are the horizontal and the vertical score lines, all right? So before I take the Simply Scored away, we're gonna make tick marks kind of at the halfway point, halfway between all of these vertical score lines, just a little score mark at the top. And that's what we're gonna to use to score the rounded part, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put this back in and this is where we're gonna score. It's halfway between each of these vertical score lines and we're gonna score just a little tick mark at seven eighths, two and five eighths, four and three eighths, six and one eighth, seven and seven eighths, and nine and five eighths. And I wanna give credit to fellow, I believe she's a German demonstrator. Her name is Britta Kohaupt, and she designed this box. Her uh, tutorial's in German, and her measurements are in metric, so I just converted them to inches, and here's the English tutorial for you. All right, so we're done with the scoreboard, but I'm gonna hold on to my stylus, because we're actually gonna use that to make these curved lines, and you're gonna, be like, whoa, that's how you do that? I love this. All right, so I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Pierce mat. It gives me a little bit of cushion to give me the, some, uh, so I can make those score lines. And we're going to use the second largest oval framelit from the Layering Ovals Framelits. And I'm using this as a template. So what I'm doing, let me bring in the template again because this will be easier to see. What I'm doing is where we made those little tick marks halfway between these vertical lines, I'm gonna line up that mark with this lower corner, I guess, that meets up with that vertical score line. And that's where I'm putting my oval die. We're gonna place it there and then I'm gonna use that to score my curved line. And we're gonna do that all the way down. What I, what I like to do is to go all the way down in one direction, okay? and then I will turn this slightly and then go all the way down the other direction. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Because there's a ball tip on this stylus, I'm not quite right at that score line because I wanna make sure that my stylus is gonna be on that little tick mark that we made. And then I am just right along the edge of that 
die two or three times making marks. Let me see if I can flip it over so you can see that. Okay, so we're gonna do that all the way down. And again, I like to do them all in one direction. All right, so I've done all of those in the one direction. Then I'm gonna do the rest of them in the other direction. So we've done all of those curved lines, and again, you're not gonna be able to see that very well. Okay, so that's what we just did with that oval layering framelit. Now what we're gonna do next is fold and burnish on all the score lines except for those curved ones, okay? Looking at the template, there's a couple parts that we're gonna cut away. So we're gonna cut away this lower right rectangle, and then I'm just gonna notch what's left on the side as our little tab. So we cut away that little uh, sliver of a rectangle, and then we're gonna cut up all of these vertical score lines, stopping at this first horizontal. So that's these score lines. We're cutting up those, stopping at the horizontal, and that's gonna be our little tabs for the bottom. All right, so we've cut up and we've made all of these little tabs. All right, now, before I adhere this together, I'm gonna just gently fold on these curved score lines. We've, we've pinched on all of those rounded score lines. Now I'm gonna use my 1 8 inch circle punch. And right where those curved marks come together, we're gonna put a little hole punch, okay? And this does not have to be exact. What I'm kind of trying to do is lining up that little guide that's on the hole punch, this thing right here, right with the top edge of the paper. And punch a hole. So we're gonna do that all the way down, again, pinching right where those two curved lines meet. So we basically have holes on either side of those two curved lines. Okay, so we've got holes on either side of where those two curved lines meet. Now what we're gonna do is place some tear and tape along this right tab, all right? And I'm gonna put the tear and tape right up to that score line. And then because this side, this box has an equal number of sides, I can just fold over from the left and then fold over from the right. And that's gonna line up right where I want it to. Okay, so there we go, it's coming together. Now we're gonna go ahead and adhere the bottom flaps of the box, trying to pay attention to where your seam is, okay, where we just put the box together, and I'm gonna consider this the back panel. So this tab right here will be the second to last panel we glue down. Just gonna go ahead and open these tabs. I like to use liquid glue for this because you're gonna have to try to eyeball keeping this hexagon an even hexagon. So I'm just gonna start with one of the tabs, putting some glue towards the end, and then I'm gonna overlap that with the opposite tab. All while trying to just pay attention to the shape of the hexagon and make sure it's nicely squared away. Okay, so that's one side. Then we're gonna go ahead and do, I put a little bit of glue right in the center there, and then glue on the edge and the same thing, opposite sides. All right, and then we're gonna do the last two. And if you remember, this was our back flap. So we're gonna go ahead and place that one down first. And then this will be our front flap. It just gives you a nicer finish from the front. And it'll be nicely squared away with that hexagon shape. Now what I'll do is just flip it over and press down from the inside. This box is big enough to get your whole hand in there. Okay, 
So now we can start to form the top and I'm going to push in where our vertical score lines are. Because what you want sticking out are the points where your two curved lines meet. I hope that makes sense. So you'll see it kind of come together here. See how that just created that really cool dome shape to the top of the box? Oh, I love this box. Britta is a genius for coming up with this design. I absolutely love it. Okay. So again, I pushed in on the score lines that go all the way down the side of the box. And the score lines that stick out are where the two curved lines meet. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So now what we're going to do is run some of our tinsel trim. This comes, you get two to a pack, five yards of silver and five yards of red. It's beautiful. We're going to use the silver on this because we've got some copper and silver elements in this beautiful paper. And let's see, this is the back of my box here because that's where the seam is. So this is the front. And a trick to this, I'm just going to grab some washi tape just a little piece of it and I'm going to wrap that tightly around the end of my tinsel trim and that's just going to prevent it. It's kind of make, turning it into a little bit of a needle for lack of a better term, but just give some structure to the end of that so I can use it kind of as a needle to feed through the line. So let me go ahead and wrap that around so you can see that. So see how I kind of gave it a little bit of a it just gives it some structure and that's going to allow us to feed that through the holes and I just kind of pinch at each of those points where those curves meet and I'll put it through two holes at a time and again this washi tape really helps. Go ahead and trim this off so we can tighten a little bit of a bow and then all I'm going to do is kind of push down and pull on that ribbon to kind of tighten that box top in place. Isn't that so cool? I'm just gonna tie a simple little bow here. Super cool, very sturdy box. So I heat embossed using the Cheers to the Year stamp set and the Sentiment Joy. Heat embossed that on Whisper White with silver embossing powder. Then I cut a circle from the Layering Circles Framelits. That's what those look like. So this is punched out with a one and a half inch circle punch. This is the third smallest circle from the Layering Circles Framelits. And then I use from the Stitch Shapes Framelits, second smallest circle to give me this little stitch shape. And this is our copper foil sheets. How beautiful is that? And it's just a really cool set of layers that really build on each other. So this is what it's going to look like all put together. Love it. And then I'm just going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to put those together. And I'm just going to pop, I don't know, about three dimensionals on the back. We are going to use the large circle from the metallic enamel shapes. Just put a little bit of bling right in the center of the O and Joy. And I love using the paper piercer for this because then I can put it right where I want it and then press it into place. And we're just going to go ahead and pop that right on the front of the box. That should fit nicely in that front panel. And there we go, a beautiful hexagon dome box inspired by the talented Britta Kohaupt. Isn't that gorgeous, but super easy to put together. I love it, and I love it with this paper with the copper. Just gorgeous. Thank you all so much for joining me live. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you a week from tonight, next Wednesday, for my next weekly Wednesday Facebook Live. Take care. Thank you. Bye.